Good morning, students. Previously, we have started the chapter Power Sharing. Today, we will continue with our next topic that is why power sharing is desirable. We have understood the functioning of power sharing and if power is not shared, there are some tensions caused. We now know the importance of sharing the power. Can you think of any reason why power sharing is desirable? Let us look into some points that is given in your book. It has two reasons. One is prudential reason and another is moral reason. Let us see prudential reason. Prudential reason stresses that power sharing will bring better outcomes. Again, under here there are mainly two points. That first one is this. Power sharing is good because it helps to reduce the possibility of conflict between social groups. As we have seen in the case of Belgium, sharing of power helped in keeping harmony among the people. The state has some power given by the central government, so they have equal opportunity to run the region, keeping in mind every individual that lives in that region, enjoying equal power, thus avoiding social conflict. And in the second point, that is, power sharing ensures the stability of political order. Now, when the power is not shared, as seen in the case of Sri Lanka, the groups from the minority feels alienated and they raise their voice for equality. This leads social conflict that often led them to violence and political instability. But sharing power maintains the relation between the majority and the minority groups, ensuring the stability of political order. And under moral reasons, it emphasizes mainly on power sharing as valuable. So in the first point, that is, power sharing is the very spirit of democracy. In a democracy, power is shared among different forms of government in the different levels. If there is no power sharing, a country cannot be called as democracy. So power sharing is the very basis and spirit of democracy. And in the second reason, that is people have a right to be consulted on how they are to be governed. Citizens can involve in the criticism of policies and decisions of the government and pressure on government so that they can rethink its policies and reconsider its decisions. Now, have you ever heard of Vikram and Betal? It is a famous tale of King Vikram and the spirit called Bet Betal. Here, in this story, Vikram was driving the motorbike and Bet Betal was sitting on the back as the pillion rider. Vikram was under a vow that he would not speak up. If he did, Betal would vanish. As they keep on riding, Betal told Vikram a story to keep him awake in the journey. So Vikram would just listen. The story's name is Khalil's dilemma. Dilemma means to be in a situation where you cannot decide which way to choose. In this story, there is a man called Khalil who lived in the city of Beirut. Beirut is the capital of Lebanon. I think you have heard the recent incident that occurred in Beirut. A massive explosion took place which killed many people and destroyed large properties. So yes, it is that place. Lebanon is a Middle East country lying in the Western Asia. So now coming back to the story, Khalil's mother was a Sunni Muslim and his father was an Orthodox Christian. People from various communities lived in Beirut and it was also known as cosmopolitan city. They lived together, intermingled, but there was a civil war that occurred in Beirut, a war where its own people of the country from different backgrounds are fighting with each other. During this war, one of the Khalil's uncle died. 
So when the war ended, the leaders of Lebanon decided to agree to some basic rules for power sharing among different communities to come to a solution. But the rule was that a president must belong to the Maronite sect of Catholic Christians and the prime minister must be from the Sunni Muslim community and the deputy minister from Orthodox Christian and the speaker from Shia Muslims. All this post allotment was fixed, which upset Khalil. Khalil was not in favor of this system. He is a man of political ambition. He wishes to take part in those posts, but it seems impossible for him. Why? Because even if his mother and father belongs to some community like Christian and Muslim, but he did not believe in any of those religions. He was also not interested to be known by any of those religions. So he wanted the country to adopt proper and normal democracy where people from any community could participate and contest in an election and the one who wins the maximum votes becomes the president or any other representatives. He was a man from a modern and educated society. Some of his elders who have been through the civil war and witnessed the violence and the bloodshed told him that the present system of fixed position of leader is the best as to maintain peace in the country. Now, Betal and Vikram reached the TV tower where they usually stopped every day. So, the story was not completed but he had to stop. Betal asks Vikram a question that if you had the power to rewrite the rules in Lebanon, what would you do? Would you adopt the regular rules followed everywhere as Khalil suggests or stick to the old rules or do something else? So children, after reading this story and understanding power sharing from the last class, what would you suggest Vikram to answer? Or what will you answer on behalf of Vikram? Vikram cannot answer as he had a deal not to speak. If he did speak up, Vetal would vanish. But Vetal also gave a condition that if he would not speak up, even after knowing the answer, his motorbike would freeze and so will Vikram. Therefore, we have to help gather answer on behalf of Vikram. Now, this question will be your homework. Make an answer in your own words, keeping in mind power sharing. Okay? Now let's move on to our last topic of the chapter that is forms of power sharing. Till now we have seen how power sharing was exercised in Belgium and what are the positive outcomes there. But in Sri Lanka as power remained under one community, the other community felt offended, discriminated and it led to social conflict. Belgium was successful in maintaining peace. Now, in modern democracy, we will see how power sharing actually works and its arrangement in many forms. There are four forms of power sharing. First, power sharing is shared among different organs of government. The organs of government are legislature, executive and judiciary. As you can see here, they are horizontally distributed so as to exercise different powers at the same level. Legislature is a law-making body. Here a law is made and then it is executed. In this executive, the implementation of law takes place. And in judiciary, the court has the power to punish the lawbreakers. Each organ checks the others to maintain a balance of power among various institutions. Here, the judiciary that is the judge can check the functioning of both the executive or laws made by the legislature. This arrangement is called a system of checks and balances. In the second point, power can be shared among government at different levels. 
Here, the levels of government are distributed vertically. In some countries, power is shared between central government or union government and provincial or regional government. Provincial and regional in other countries may be named differently. In India, we call them state government. Such government for entire country is usually called federal government. In India, there is also another level called local government, under which lies municipality and panchayat. This is the levels of government. But also remember that in some countries there is no provincial or state government. They only have central or union government. In the third point, power may also be shared among different social groups. Social groups may be based on religious and linguistic groups. We have studied the elements of accommodation of Belgium where community government is formed by election by the people belonging to one language community. This is one good example for social groups. Can you give another example, which you have already studied last year? Yes, it is the system of reserved constituencies. In this type of arrangement, groups such as scheduled caste, scheduled tribe and other backward classes are given some seat reservation system. Why? because they are less developed or say slow developing people from such region as compared to the metropolitan cities from the mainland. They are also called as weaker section. In some countries there are constitutional and legal arrangements whereby socially weaker sections and women are represented in the legislatures and administration. The system of reserved constituencies provide them chances and a fair share in power. Now in the fourth and last form, power sharing arrangements can also be seen in the way political parties, pressure groups and movements control or influence those in power. In a democracy, Citizens are free to choose any party. There are many political parties in India who have intense competition against each other to come to the power and form the government. In the long run, power is shared among different political parties that represent different ideologies and social groups. Different groups have different ideology. Sometimes, Two or more parties form an alliance. Alliance means a group of people or country joined together in some activity. So they form alliance to contest elections. They share the power before the election and even after winning, they form a coalition government and share some power among their groups. Pressure groups are organizations that attempt to influence government policies. They do not aim to directly control or share political power. These organizations are formed when people with common occupation, interests, aspirations or opinions come together in order to achieve a common objective. There are also some interest groups such as traders, businessmen, industrialists, farmers and industrial workers. They also participate in governmental committees and help influence on the decision-making process. Pressure groups mainly focuses more on the cause and interest group focuses on structure and organization. So students, this was the last topic of this chapter. I hope you all have understood and now we will end today's class. Thank you.